Good morning and welcome to Abbeywood Community Church. We're pleased that you're able to join with us today and we trust our service together will be a real blessing to you. What a challenging week it's been for many of us. Yep, the whole situation with Covid has been so difficult, hasn't it? And for many of you, no doubt, it's been a really tough time. Maybe family-wise, work-wise, you've really been struggling. Our prayer is today that you will be refreshed and you will be helped, you will be encouraged and you will be built up. And we can only do that really as we look to Jesus. He's the author, he's the one that starts our lives, he's the one that finishes our lives, he's the one that gives us hope, he's the one that brings the rescue into our situation day by day. He's the one that supplies all that we need. Our first song this morning, Behold Our God, just speaks of the majesty and the awesome greatness of God. But it doesn't just speak of that. It speaks of the way in which God breaks into our lives and helps us day by day. If you don't yet know God and you have no experience of him in your life, listen in to the words or even join in if you can to sing. Let's join together then. Behold our God. Journey. 
how awesome is our God. How incredible to think that he made all this creation, the wonder of it, the splendour of it, the majesty of it. How amazing to think that he made us as human beings. How intricately and wonderfully we're made. And yet we know we're broken, don't we? We know there's stuff wrong with our lives and we know we, we need to be right with God as, as well as right with one another. That's a challenge, isn't it? We don't like to admit sometimes the sin in our own lives. But it's good to recognise the fact that we're not right. Because sometimes when we try to cover that up, it just screws us up even more. And it makes our lives even more messy and even more of a struggle. So let's come before God now. Let's worship him for who he is. And let's ask for his forgiveness. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the privilege of coming to speak with you. You are such a great and awesome God. When we think of all that you have made, when we look at the splendour and the wonder of our creation, we can be open mouthed with awe, surprised by the incredible way in which everything works together so well. And yet, Father, we know that even when we look at nature and when we look at human beings and the way in which we relate to one another, we are broken people. We aren't perfect. We make mistakes. We do things wrong. Lord, we say sorry to you today for the sin in our lives. Sorry for saying things, for doing things that have displeased you. Sorry for offending other people. Sorry for leaving things undone that we should have done. Sorry for making judgments that are wrong and unhelpful. Sorry for being critical. Lord, forgive us for these things. Sorry that we've ignored you and not put you in the right place in our lives. Help us to understand you better, Father, and help us to get to know you more. Lord, as we spend this time together, please would you encourage us and help us uh, and just give us a, a bigger glimpse of who you are and what you have done in this world and in our lives too. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to be singing again shortly and our next song is Whom Shall I Fear? This talks about the, the way in which God cares for us and watches over us and, and speaks about God going before us and God going beside us and God going behind us. And that's tremendous. The God of angels' armies is always on our side. But during the course of our time together, uh, Ada Ronke is going to be reading the scriptures to us uh, and you'll find the reading in the letter that Peter wrote to the church, the churches in northern Turkey. And that's found in the New Testament. That's 1 Peter chapter 1. You can look that up on a Bible app or look it up in your Bible if you have one. Seanette is going to be sharing with us uh, well, she's actually going to be sharing specifically for the children, but it would be great to listen in because I'm sure it will be really helpful to all of us. And Peggy's going to be leading us in prayer. And then Ryan will be opening up God's word to us. And that's particularly from verses 13 to 22 of 1 Peter. And before he does that, we'll be singing Amazing Grace. But just now, let's sing our next song, Whom Shall I Fear?
boys and girls. My name is Seanette and Helena asked me to do something today while she's off planning her next lockdown adventure story. Helena's been talking about meals with Jesus and so far we've heard about a wedding that Jesus went to, a banquet and a really cool meal Jesus had with his besties Mary, Martha and Lazarus. Now, do you remember bits of what Martha said? What did you do? Well, I put down the things that I had in my hand. I marched out of the kitchen. I went straight into where Jesus was. I stood in front of him and, and I had a go at him. You had a go at Jesus? Yes. That's right. She confessed that she had a go at Jesus and she said she did it in front of the other guests. Has anyone ever had a go at you? Maybe a friend or family member or at school in front of your classmates. How did it make you feel? Did you feel all embarrassed and wished you could disappear? Or did you feel really angry and say you'll never talk to that person ever again? How do you think Jesus felt? Was he embarrassed? Did he get angry and say, Martha, get away from me. I'm never speaking to you again. No, he was gentle and kind even after she'd had a go at him. He forgave her. He reminds me of the theme of one of the days during our Summer Kids Club. The theme of the week was Meals with Jesus, but one particular day was about forgiveness. Let's have a look. Dear, I think I've picked up the wrong bag. Tomatoes, strawberries. What does this remind me of? Yeah. Of course! Our memory verse this week. Today's theme is being forgiven. When we say sorry to God and really mean it, he is so loving and kind. He forgives us. So like when we say bad things, do wrong things, when we say sorry to our parents or our friends, hopefully they forgive us. But Jesus, he sees our thoughts and things that we do in secret, things that no one sees those things need forgiveness too. Jesus can forgive and he will if we ask him properly. He'll know what we don't need. Having a friendship with Jesus is so cool. It's like the best thing ever. I've been talking to him a lot through lockdown, asking him questions. Sometimes I get 
answers and sometimes I don't and that's okay because I believe and trust that he knows what's best and I'm so glad that he keeps me. Now I hope that my friends will be with me for this party food. Now at the mini party at his bestie's house Jesus wasn't angry. He was gentle. Martha was so distracted with all her pots and pans and so many things happening all at once and she was annoyed that no one was helping and she just had a go. <laughs> that can happen when we get distracted. It happened to Martha and it can happen to us too. She learned that it's best to focus on Jesus. You might be thinking, well, it's all right for her. She was with Jesus a lot. So it was easy to focus on him. How can I do that nowadays? Good question. I asked a couple of people who were old enough to use WhatsApp how they focus on Jesus. And these are some of the words they said. Now you might even hear some of them say, oh, that's my word. And if you spot a word that describes what you do, shout, I do that. And if you see a word that describes something that you can or will do, shout, I can do that. Oh, you might think, hmm, I will do that. So, are you ready? Okay, let's have a look now. Well done. Remember, it's easy for us to get distracted and spend a lot of time thinking loads of different things. What am I going to do? What am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? When will I get to do this or go there or do this and that? But the Bible is very clear that we should focus on God. Matthew 6 verses 31 to 33 says don't worry about what you're going to eat or wear people who ignore Jesus do that but our Heavenly Father knows exactly what we need so if we look to him first then he'll give us what we need there's something else in Matthew 6 do you know what it is it's a famous prayer. Do you know it? Why don't you grab your Bible later, go and have a look, and when you find it, read it to your parents or brothers and sisters, or say it with someone in your bubble this week. For now, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you're always with us, even when we can't see, feel, or hear you. When we forget about you or get distracted, please help us to remember that we should always try our best to focus on you and not forget about you. Thank you for helping us through difficult times and we will trust that you'll always be there to forgive us and love us. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to you in praise and adoration. Thank you for your faithfulness and your love toward us. 
thank you that your word reminds us that when we pray to you, you incline your ear to listen to us. Father, you have created this world and everything in it. We are yours, made in your image. We bring to you this world now for your help in the midst of the pan pandemic and all the different effects it has had on our societies. Lord, we pray that you will use all this for your glory. Pray, Lord, that the governments all over the world will be responsible in how they manage the people under their care. We pray especially for your children who are suffering for their faith at this time. Thank you, Lord, that you have not forgotten them. Please encourage them in their love and please bless them. Thank you, Father, for the different agencies that you have placed to bring them the, the help that they need at this time. Pray for the work of Open Doors, for Barnabas, Tear Fund and many more. Thank you that you have provided ways to get help and encouragement to your children. Please bless these agencies and help us, Lord, to be mindful of how we can help our brothers and sisters who suffer for your name's sake. We bring our own country to you, Lord. By your grace, there is a rich heritage of men and women who have served you in the past and in turn you have blessed this nation. We cry to you now for, for this land that there would be a turning to you, Lord. And in your love, you have allowed this disruption, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that it could have been so much worse. Thank you for all that you've given us. Thank you for the NHS, Lord. Thank you that you've allowed peace to prevail. Father, we want to see good coming from this, that people will seek you. Your word tells us, Lord, that when we seek you, you will allow us to be found to be found and we will find you we need more of you lord please bring salvation to many in this land and revive us as your people to love you with fresh hearts devoted to you lord please protect us from social unrest we pray for america and the netherlands at this time we pray that there would be unity and love to overcome these difficult situations and lord we pray that you would revive your church there too we thank you for Abbey Wood Church, for the leadership team. Pray that you will hold them close to you and that they will know your protection over them and their families. Please continue to bless them, Father, and encourage them to do your will. Lord, we bring every individual person in the church to you. You know the concerns of each one. You know the joys. You know the rejoicing. You know the sadness at times. And you know the different pain of each and every one of us. Lord, we praise you for loving us and for caring for us and for your faithful mercy to us and to our families. We bring to you those that we love that are at present are unsaved or not walking with you. Lord, our desire is to see each of them coming and loving you. And now, Lord, we bring our service to you. We pray that you will speak to each one of us individually, that we will take to heart what you are teaching us and that we will go out knowing and growing closer to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today's reading is from the book of First Peter, chapter 1, verses 13 to 21. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. It was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. sweet the sound the 
Good morning, everybody. I hope you've been enjoying our series in 1 Peter, and today we're going to continue that. Looking at the first chapter, and looking from verses 13 to 21. But I want you to think with me for a second. Before sat-naps, anybody remember what we used to use to get from one place to another if we hadn't been there before? I remember when I was a kid, I would, I would sit in the passenger seat with my, my dad driving or my mom driving or whatever. We'd go on a road trip. And uh, if you were sitting in the passenger seat, you had to know how to read a map. You had to know um, how we were going to get there. And you needed two things to start off. We needed the destination, and we needed to know where we were starting from. And then from there, we would figure out the route to be able to get from where we were to where we needed to be. And that's kind of like what we've, we've got in these, this first chapter of 1 Peter. Um, as, as Jeff started talking, we, we got the, the, the starting point, where we are as Christmas. Are, we, we see where the destination is in that, that future with Christ. But now in this part, he's going to kind of say, okay, now I'm going to tell you the route. Now, this isn't a thing where you've, you've got to do the works to get or be able to get to Christ. 
This is the route that you're, you're taking based upon what God's word says so that we honor God because he's given us that grace and given us that gift in Christ. Now, let, let's go through it and then it, it, maybe it'll make a little bit more, more sense. And, and the way this, this next part starts off, it makes us kind of look at verses 1 to 12. Because it starts off and it says, therefore. Therefore means, you know, because of all these things that I've set up until this point, now this needs to be happening. And so Chris and Jeff have been helping us with the, the last couple of weeks. And now, therefore... We're going to look at verse 13 and it says, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. Now, I was looking at several different translations to try to, to, to see what it said. And, and the Christian Standard Bible says like this, Therefore, with your minds ready for action, be sober-minded. Or the New Living Translation says, so prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. In other words, you can't just be aloof in this life with Christ. We can't just sit there and say, okay, I've got Christ. I've accepted him as my Savior. Now I'll just kind of sit back and wait till the end. No, we are challenged here to do something with what we've been given. To whom much is given, much is required. And so, going back to that map analogy, Peter, is just, Peter here is showing us this route that we need to be taking. The way we need to be living because of the gracious hope that we have in Jesus Christ. That we need to be living a holy life. Now, let's look at the next few verses and it'll, it'll kind of focus us a little bit. It says this in verse 14, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. So basically, don't, don't let your, your past self, your old self, dictate what you're going to do now. Don't, don't conform to those old evil desires. It says in verse 15, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. It's not enough to just have Christ. God wants us to live differently because of the living hope we have in Christ. There should be a difference because he is in our life. He wants us engaged and plugged in. That goes back to that being sober-minded and, and alert and ready for action. We need to be engaged and plugged in, living purposefully in our life in Christ. Now, I know that several thoughts probably pop into your head when it says, you know, holy. Well, one thing that might happen is you might think, oh, that, that means he wants me to be perfect. No, it, it's not that. Uh, another thing that might pop into your head is that you're thinking, you, you think of that person who, who acted and thought like they were above everybody else. I am so holy. No, nope, that's not right either. When it says holy here, what it is saying is that he, here he means, I want you to be separate. I want you to be someone who is living not in the same way as those who are in and of the world. Now, a couple things happen right now. People... People have a reaction sometimes that isn't correct. Sometimes people think, oh, well, I'm supposed to be separate from the world, so I'm going to isolate myself, and I'm only going to deal with Christians, and I'm only going to interact with Christians, and I'll only do this with Christians and that with Christians, and I won't know any non-Christians, therefore they won't corrupt me. That's not right. Jesus said to be in the world, but not of the world. And the great thing is Jesus was the perfect example of this. Jesus lived a holy life. Jesus lived a perfect life. Yet Jesus was in and amongst those who needed him most. If you, you look at it, you know, he, when he was dealing with the religious group, the ones who tried to act as if they were God's gift to the people, very holier than thou, very much above everyone else. He was dealt with them very strongly. He says, look, this is, 
You are not righteous in and of yourself. You can't complete the law, no matter how much you convince yourself that you do. And then he, he looked at the people who, who, were, who were living through their life in selfish ways and different things like that. And he said, you know what? I'm going to be amongst these people. I'm going to live the way God says I need to live. And guess what? It will attract people. It will show people the difference. And, and the Pharisees and the, the religious groups, what they wanted is they, they, they wanted to kind of stick it to him because he was in and amongst the sinners and the outcasts and those that the Pharisees thought were below them and everything else. And Jesus said, no, I'm going to love people. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point them to God the Father. I'm going to point them to their need for repentance. I'm going to show them their need for me by loving them. By caring for them, by serving them. And he said, I'm, he, he's going to live a holy life in this time. He's going to live a holy life in and amongst the people who needed him most. He became a living testimony day in and day out. And his apostles were watching him do this. And, and Peter who's writing this letter is one of those apostles that is watching him learn, uh, watching him live day to day, serving, loving, caring for people, living a holy life amongst those who needed him most. So when he calls us to be holy, when he calls us to be separate, as we accept Christ our Savior, there should be a difference that is visible to non-Christians, non-believers, there's a difference in us, not because of us, but because of him, not because of, of just what we won't do, but what we will do. Think the way that we will love people, the way that we will serve people, the way that we will care for people, not because we're better in any way, but because God is holy and we are called to be the same. We're supposed to look a little bit strange to the world. We should stick out a bit. Why? Because how else are going to people know? How else are people going to know the difference that Christ made in us? Now, when we, we look at verse 17, it says, Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. Now, remember, the reason it's talking about us as foreigners here is because our home, our citizenship is in heaven once we accept Christ as our Savior. And then when it brings up this reverent fear, it's kind of reminding us of what we've talked about in previous series, like in Proverbs, talking about the fear of the Lord. When we fear the Lord, when we love the Lord, when we have this reverence for the Lord, we don't have to worry about everything else. Dr. Tony Evans in his commentary on 1 Peter says this about this verse. Those who come to God through Jesus address him as father and are to conduct themselves in reverence for God by taking him seriously. God expects his kingdom kids to look like him. Since he is holy, we are to be holy. Non-Christians should be viewing us a little strange because you are seeking to conform to God's standards and not to the world's. So because of the fact that we're looking and trying to attain, to, to do God's standards, the world standards and God's standards are, are very much different. And so it should be a visible difference. Now, in this life, we will be tempted to not look different than the world. There will be times that we, our faith is weak and we're, we're feeling shaky. And so we won't want to act as though we are set apart. When we're, when we're trying to talk with our youth and stuff like that, we talk about this and you think about it. What's the number one thing you don't want to do when you're a teenager? You don't want to stick out from everybody else. Because then all of a sudden it's like this beacon, this light, and everybody's going, whoa, what's wrong with this guy? Or, or they're afraid people are going to start talking about him and stuff like that. And a lot of that carries over into our adult life sometimes too. And all of us are going to have a time when we're, when we're tempted to compromise when we're tempted to not be set apart. But that's when that fear of the Lord comes in and we, 
we know who our eyes are fixed on. And because we know that our eyes are fixed on him, then that drives us to want to do and be more like Christ. Now, Peter gives us another reason to not be like the world. And in the next few verses, it, it, he shows us what a heavy price was paid so that we could come to be in a relationship with God the Father. In verse 18, it says this, For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect, he was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. A pastor in Texas named Juan Sanchez says this in his commentary. He says, So while we are to fear God, we're also to remember that God has already judged our sin in Jesus. Consider the cost of your redemption as you meditate on the truth of the gospel, and you will be motivated to pursue holiness. A lot of times when we think about the price of things, we think about money. But the price of our salvation was the life that Jesus had. The cost of, of our salvation is the blood, all of it, that he shed on the cross that day. That is more valuable than any piece of silver or gold could ever be. He gave his life so that we could be made new. He gave his life so that we could then be in relationship. And now he calls us to be holy. And this should drive us. Understanding the price that was paid. Understanding the value of Jesus' life that was paid on that cross. And when we think about it, his blood was traded for all of our sins. It was traded for all the bad things we would ever do if we would just accept it. If we would accept that gift that he's given. Now think about the weight. I've seen in so many TV shows and, and, and biographies and different things, when, when someone gives up their life for someone else, like that person feels like they owe them something. God's not trying to hold something over our heads. He's saying, hey, because of this gift, Live differently. Be holy. Be separate from what the world is saying. And follow me. Now, I have to be honest with you. There have been many times in my life where I have forgotten the value of that price. I have forgotten how much it cost to save me. There have been times in my selfishness that I have just gone based upon my own desires and my own wants, and I just followed that without even think. I no, I'm sorry, I did think. I made the choice. And this week, as I'm going through, it's like God's been reminding me, "Hey, remember, you were bought with a price. See how valuable that price was." And it's one of these these times where, as I've been studying, I've had to. To look at myself before I could ever do this. And one of the things that it does is it just makes the value of that, that sacrifice even more. I challenge you to think through that. Think of the price that was paid for all of us. Now verse 20 shows us that this was not something that was an afterthought. Okay, I'll read verse 20 again. It says, He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in the last times for your sake. This was not something that God just kind of came up with to kind of fix a problem. No, it says before. Before there was a need, he had the solution. And that solution was Christ. He was chosen before creation, before the world even went off kilter and started going all crazy because of sin. For our sake, he had this 
lamb without blemish, this perfect lamb, ready and waiting. This should once again push us to be holy as he has called us to be. And Pastor Juan Sanchez summed it up in this way. He says, when we meditate on this gospel and continue believing this gospel, we will be warned by God's judgment and motivated by God's grace to walk in holiness, to become more like him as we journey toward the day when we meet him, not only as our king, but as our father. So when we think of that map again, the destination, if we've accepted Christ, has been set by God, when we have accepted him as our savior, when we've asked him to be our savior, when we've repented from our sins and he adopts us into his family, he says, this is the end destination now. Now it's up to us to be holy as he is holy. That doesn't mean you just fill your time up with doing a bunch of religious stuff. It's about living it out on a day-to-day -day basis like we had the example in Christ. Now, some people may sit there and say, well, it's, it's easy to bring up Jesus as an example because he was the son of God. So, of course, he was going to do that. Yeah, but we also see it in the life of Peter. We see it in the life of Paul. We see it in the, in the first century church, the Christians who, who began to live it out in the midst of persecution, in the midst of trials, in the midst of all these negative things, and they were still reaching out, loving, caring, serving, and making sure that their life was imitating that of Christ. Now, if you're a Christian and you've accepted Christ as your Savior, my question is this, are we doing that? Are we living it out on a day-to-day -day basis? Are we being holy as he is holy? Are we doing that? Are we doing what we need to to be in a growing, thriving relationship with Jesus Christ? Or are we malnourished? Have we not been feeding ourselves with God's word? Have we not been spending that time in prayer? Have we been weakening ourselves by choosing the world? Now, maybe you're sitting there this morning and you sit there and go, I've never done any of this. I've got questions. I don't quite understand. Well, that's why we're here. I know we can't be physically together, but that's why we're here. If you have any questions, you want to talk to Chris or Jeff or myself, we're available to sit down and talk. Now, right now, it'll be over Zoom or over the phone. But we want to answer any questions you might have. Maybe you don't understand any of it and you just say, look, kind of explain from the start. Okay. We'd love for you to contact us on our, on our email address so that we can set up a time to do that. Our email address is info at abbeywoodcc.org. We would love to, for you to get in contact with us so that we can discuss these things with you. But whether you've, you haven't accepted Christ yet or you have, we all have a decision that we need to make. We all have to decide what we're going to do today. So I pray that, that you not just sit there, but if you have any questions, please contact us. If you're part of our church body and you've been struggling, please contact us. Even if it's just being able to set up some one-to-ones or something like that to where we can study God's word together to be able to encourage and sharpen each other along the way. We look forward to doing that. How great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness 
soar through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could Such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down from glory To wear my sin And bear my shame The cross has spoken I am forgiven The King of kings calls me Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. Salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the side. truly great to know that God stands beside us. He cares for us. He loves us and he really wants the best for us. A little surprised that we can say hallelujah to the one who set us free. Hallelujah because he goes with us every day. Maybe you've been particularly blessed and helped by somebody coming alongside you to encourage you. Maybe this week you could be that encourager to somebody else. Let's ask God now to be with us and to help us live for him this week. Lord, our God, we, we thank you for your grace to us in the Lord Jesus. We thank you that you can put other people around us to help us and to encourage us. We pray that you would help us to be an encouragement and a blessing to other people this week. Lord, we pray for your blessing and your peace in our lives. 
May your name be glorified in our lives. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you're not normally with us and you stay with us right through to the end of our service and you'd like to know more about us, then do look up on our website, abbeywoodcc.org. You'll find all sorts of information about the church of Abbeywood Community Church. And then if you'd like to be in touch and we'd be more than happy to to have a, a chat with you, to maybe phone you, maybe to WhatsApp, maybe to just correspond on email. It's abbeywoodcc.org. That's the website, but it's info at abbeywoodcc.org. Info at abbeywoodcc.org. Now, in the middle of the week, we have an opportunity of being together to share informally with one another, to read the Bible, to pray together, to, to share with one another. If you'd like to join us on Zoom, then please again be in touch with us on info at abbeywoodcc.org if you don't know the link up details. May God bless you this week. May his grace and peace fill your life.